if you're not a fan of his work, then I can seriously tell you you're not going to enjoy this movie. I went and saw this film at the um, FAU Living Room Theater, and this theater is notorious for having nothing but senior citizens at the screenings. I, I rarely see college students uh, utilizing this theater. And the theater was quite full, and I just kept counting one by one people getting up leaving during the middle of the movie because they just couldn't handle the, the heaviness that uh, this movie was throwing at. And people just thought it was wackadoo and weird and stupid and, and uh, grotesque, uh, mainly because of... There's this one scene of graphic nudity, and it uh, didn't bother me none, but it seemed to bother these uh, geriatrics. So it was kind of funny watching these people uh, leave the theater. But what really got to me was them constantly commentating over the movie. I couldn't handle it. It was, it was breaking my concentration trying to write down my notes. In a way, actually, that kind of made the experience a little more rejuvenating. I really like it when a movie affects um, people. And, you know, it, it makes them feel these twisted emotions, and you see them get angry, and you, or you see them get happy. You know, I, when a movie does that, even if the entire audience hates it, it's enforcing what it is. And that's what I have to give props to Von Trier for doing that. Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I think about uh, this movie. Uh, I gave the movie a, a grade B. You can read my... Uh, my paragraph form review on my website at thatmovieswelovesite.wordpress.com. What, you pulling a gun on me? I'm not afraid of you. Just calm down, all right? You think you can take me? I'm Santa Claus. Ah! Oh! <sighs> Great. I just beat up Santa Claus. Okay, and now I want to do something new on my show, kind of <laughs> kind of stole this idea from a couple of different podcasts, but then again, I guess they all borrow certain elements from each other to see what works and what doesn't work. I'm going to do uh, a top five countdown to my favorite unconventional Christmas slash holiday films. People are wondering, oh, let's watch uh, a Christmas movie. Me, I kind of like to watch the non-traditional Christmas movies. I like... Uh, the darker stuff, or the more twisted stuff, or just the straight up, you know, hilarity stuff that, you know, that isn't a white Christmas, or a Christmas story, or it's a wonderful life. So, I'm gonna go with that. My unconventional list, how I did it was these movies, usually they would either take place over Christmas time, they um, use Christmas in a very uh, demeaning manner, or they totally um, satire the holiday of Christmas. Or it might not even be Christmas at all, because I did say in the title of my top, my top five countdown that these are Christmas slash holiday movies. So maybe one of these films uh, doesn't necessarily take place on Christmas. Okay, at number five, I'm going to go with... Oh, I just said the title. Go. Doug Lehman directs this high-octane crime caper with witty characters who are sharp as nails and others that are utterly ridiculous. The movie plays out in a very Pulp Fiction type of sense. The movie takes place during the time of Christmas, focusing on some young people of the, Los, of the greater Los Angeles area. And it all starts when a drug deal goes completely wrong, and then the movie focuses on different vantage points of these people and how the, the messed up drug deal affects all of them. There's this really great sequence, I have to say, that involves uh, Desmond Askew and... Um, the other guys' names uh, escape me. But Desmond Askew, Askew they, um, they go to Las Vegas and they run into some big trouble there, especially at a strip club. And it just leads to a uh, road trip chase uh, from the club owners, and it is quite hysterical. Let me see what I can do. Give me a number. I can't believe you're selling allergy medicine. Oh, we're out of that. We're down to chewable aspirin. I think I feel something really smooth, isn't it? Okay, at number four, I'm going with Trading Places. The movie uh, <laughs> where it pairs Dan Aykroyd and Eddie Murphy. That is probably the most genius pairing you could ever ask for in a comedy. And it wouldn't have been uh, possible without John Landis uh, 
Animal House director, um, American Werewolf of London, the Blues Brothers, so you have to have him to thank. The movie uh, takes place over three different uh, holidays. you got Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. The climax ends on New Year's Eve on a train, which kind of resembles or maybe pays a homage to uh, the train sequences on movies, especially North by Northwest. The movie is about um, a bum, uh, played by Eddie Murphy, who uh, is switched places with a rich stockbroker type, played by Dan Aykroyd, thanks to two older rich brothers that work under Dan Aykroyd's character. Both the brothers are played by Don Amich and Ralph Bellamy. And they make a $1 bet that they can make a homeless bum into a rich, successful business type, and taking a rich, successful business type they despise and turning him into a bum. While the plot may sound, you know, iffy to some, the movie is without a doubt a comedy classic and is definitely something I find myself watching over the month of December. It is hilarious. Eddie Murphy, without a doubt, this was one of his best performances of the 80s next to, of course, Beverly Hills Cop. And um, <laughs> nothing can top a topless scene than the scene with Jamie Lee Curtis in her apartment with Dan Aykroyd. Very funny, shading places. Dazzlement. I've never stolen anything in my life. I look at the man I loved, whose children I wanted to have in breastfeed be a heroin dealer. It wasn't heroin, it was angel dust, PCP, and a... Listen, Penelope, I swear to you, on my honor, with almighty God as my witness, I am not an angel dust dealer. Oh, Lewis. I've been looking everywhere for you, baby. Listen, Lewis, it's you. I'm hurting, baby. I just need a show. Lewis, who is this person? And at number three, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't feel right if I did not put this movie on my list. And my number three choice is National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Oh, Mrs. Shirley. Uh... We got your Christmas card the other day, and my family and I are very flattered that you remembered us. Corporate cards. Don't forget that report, Bill. Yes, sir. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Kiss my ass. Kiss his ass. Kiss your ass. Happy Hanukkah. The movie is iconic in the National Lampoon's canon for many reasons. I mean, Chevy Chase, for one, uh, always dominates um, the lead Clark Griswold. Beverly D'Angelo as uh, Ellen Griswold. And you always, every time there's a vacation movie, Rusty and Audrey, they always seem to uh, be recasted. And I don't understand why, but it, for some reason, I just find it the funniest. And Big Bang Theory's John Galecki plays... Uh, rusty in this film. I have to say that he is the best Rusty out of the entire uh, Vacation series. Uh, sorry, Anthony Michael Hall, but uh, I have to give it to Galecki. He was, without a doubt, the better Rusty. At number two, I, uh, you know, this also is a given. I am a diehard Ghostbuster fanatic, and more importantly, I am a uh, longtime believer of Mr. Bill Murray. So, this wouldn't be an unconventional Christmas movie list if it didn't have Scrooged on the list. Scrooged is a very unconventional take on the classic Charles Dickens novel, uh, Christmas Carol. They do it in a modernized version where uh, the Scrooge type is uh, a TV executive who is trying to put on a um, special live Christmas Carol show on Christmas Eve. And Bill Murray is without doubt the pitch perfect choice to play a Scrooge like character. And <laughs> I think this is probably the best movie utilizing the three Christmas ghosts in the best ways. And they're so odd. They are odder than the next. But I have to say, if I'm going to give it to the best one, it's going to be the Ghost of Christmas Present. Carol Kane, I mean, she is without a doubt unforgettable in that role. Oh, good, my jaw. Oh, sometimes the truth is painful, Frank, uh -huh. but it's made your cheeks all rosy and your eyes bright as stars. If you touch me again, I'm going to rip your goddamn wings off, okay? Oh, you know I like the rough stuff, don't you, Frank? 
All right, we have reached our number one unconventional Christmas holiday movie. And, drum roll please, it is Die Hard. Now I have a machine gun. Ho, ho, ho. A security guard we missed? Usually tired of this when we're growing fat on a pension. No, 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 this is something else. I mean, come on, it's Die Hard. You can't go wrong with Die Hard. It is the greatest action movie of all time, the greatest Bruce Willis movie of all time. It takes place over Christmas Eve. Terrorists are attacking the Yakutoma building. They are robbing it. They are going crazy. They're killing people. Hans, Booby. I mean, come on. This is a Christmas movie you have to watch on Christmas. I don't care if it has a body count of a thousand. This is one of the best unconventional Christmas movies of all time. Uh, for honorable mentions, I will mention uh, The Ref. Very funny dark comedy done by Ted Demi, Kevin Spacey, Judy Davis, and uh, our lead cat burglar played by Dennis Leary. Great film. Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. I was contemplating if I was going to put this in my top five. It does take place over Thanksgiving and only Thanksgiving, so, yeah. Uh, I was also going to mention Bad Santa, The Nightmare Before Christmas, The Ice Harvest, and I was so... I was contemplating again if I should put Batman Returns on the list. But then again, you know, it's not the best Batman movie in the world, but it is a Batman movie that takes place over Christmas. And if anyone's going to ruin Christmas, it's going to be the Penguin. You can learn more about all my uh, movie articles and reviews at thatmoviesweloveSite.wordpress.com. You can follow me on Twitter, double A A Prode, spelled D O U B L E A A P R O D. Prode is short for Productions, since that is my company, AA Productions. That is it for this show. Hope to hear from you guys. Uh, if you have any recommendations or any reviews or any top five you want me to do, I'll be more than happy to do so. Catch you next time, and have a happy holidays. Yeah.